It's official. Netflix has given the green light for season two of One Piece, but we also have news on seasons three, four, five, six, and actually, you know what? Let's go all the way to season 12. I'm not joking. The executive producers of Tomorrow Studios have made some very bold statements regarding our live action One Piece. But first, I would like to make a public apology. When season one first dropped, I was posting my episode by episode thoughts on Twitter, which concluded with the statement, One Piece is not the curse breaker, but it's another step in the right direction for live action. Well, I, man on the internet, was wrong. The very fact that One Piece is even getting a season two at all makes it an automatic curse breaker. So this isn't just an amazing day for One Piece fans, it's a pretty landmark event for anime and manga in general. And season two was announced in a pretty brilliant way. They had the author, Echiro Oda himself, deliver the announcement through his custom made live action Den Den Mushi. In case you didn't know, Echiro Oda never shows his face. I mean, there are a couple of photos of him from a long time ago, but that's pretty standard practice with manga authors. Most like to remain as anonymous as they can. And so what they do is they invent these little avatar things for themselves, with Oda's being a man with a fish head, which is why I often use these images when I talk about him. But the announcement of season two, honestly, it's almost lackluster compared to everything that came along with it, because Forbes posted an article titled, Forget Season Two, Netflix's One Piece is mapping out six seasons, hoping for 12, which is an article reporting on another article posted by Deadline, because that's how journalism works. Someone reports a thing and then everyone else reports the report. It's kind of like a fancier version of quote retweeting, and it's also exactly what I'm doing right now, because Deadline interviewed the executive producers, Marty Adelstein and Becky Clements, and it's here that they laid out their grand plan for One Piece. Netflix is known for meticulously analyzing viewership data and rarely gives out quick renewals, but I assume you have hopes for a second season. I should say this interview was conducted before or Netflix officially gave the green light. But the response is, we have hopes for 12 seasons. There's so much material. We're over 1,080 chapters at this point in the manga. We have plans with Matt Owens for how we would break multiple seasons. And I think even if we did six seasons, we would probably only use up half of the chapters in the manga. It really could go on and on and on. But you do have at least six seasons in you. Oh yeah, easy brackets, laughs. <laughs> and that's where we're getting this six season number from, which at the moment, it looks like six seasons is the calculation required to cover all of the pre-time skip era. Cause that's about half the chapters of the manga, which eh, yeah, it seems about right. You've got season two, Alabasta, season three, Skypea, season four, Any Slobby Water 7, Mm, good, good season. Season five, Thriller Bark, and I guess maybe you would end it with Sabadi. Bit depressing, but eh, at least you're not in Thriller Bark the whole season. That would be more depressing. Then season six, you got all the Paramount War stuff, which would also be a bit of a downer to end the whole show on if we did only get to six seasons. But really thinking about it, there is no good ending spot. Either you do all of One Piece, which is you know, 12 seasons, probably more, or there's gonna be a bit of a weird ending somewhere. And there's one other question from this interview that I wanted to highlight. A world building show like One Piece is a major undertaking. What were the biggest production challenges in season one. One of the challenges you have in South Africa is weather. You can only shoot best at a certain time of year. So that always comes into play. And even the weather cooperated, which isn't always the case. So we had many challenges, but we had the most professional and awe-inspiring team there that just helped us pull it off. Which is a very enlightening nugget dropped there because I've been assuming that the vast quantity of indoor scenes, mostly bar scenes that we see are a result of budget. Shooting outside is expensive and most of what happens outside are the big fights battles. But the weather is an interesting factor. If South Africa is challenging weather-wise, then that may incentivize more indoor scene writing. But also, even in the best case, it seems like they can only shoot outdoor stuff at certain times of year, which would impact season two, because no matter how quickly it gets put into production, and it doesn't look like it's happening quickly at the moment, but no matter how quickly that happens, we still might need to wait for a certain time of year to actually shoot it. But now that it's official, here's what we should expect from season two of One Piece. Firstly, there's a character we saw as a bit of a teaser button at the end of season one, a Marine smoking with two cigars, excessive. And look, even if you have no background in One Piece, chances are you could probably guess what his name is. It's Smoker, his name is Smoker. A lot of One Piece characters are named after the thing it is they do. But because we're seeing him from behind, I have to imagine that he wasn't actually cast when they shot this and that he could end up looking very different in the actual season two. However, Smoker was actually in season one, right at the beginning. As a young lad, we saw him at Roger's execution, which is going to be very important for him 
his story in season two. You see, Smoker is a little bit disturbed of just how much Luffy reminds him of Roger from that very day. So he decides to pursue Luffy for, uh, for justice and such, meaning that he will be spearheading the Marine B plot of season two, probably taking over the Garp role from season one. Except this time, the Marines won't be pulling any punches. Smoker has zero family connection to Luffy, zero empathy to Luffy, so he'll be trying his hardest to catch those darn pirates. The next thing to expect is Baroque Works. These will be the big bad villain guys of season two, who we've also already seen in season one. In the very first episode, Zoro fights and kills, rather brutally, Mr. Seven after he tries to recruit Zoro into the organization. And Baroque Works is our first step into the real underworld of One Piece. Because yeah, I, I guess they're technically pirates, but they operate more akin to a crime family on water. And as part of this, they all have fun code names. All of the men are given a number, Mr. One, Two, Three, Four, Five, and you know, you know the rest. And all of the women are named after a day of the week or a holiday. And at the head of this organization is going to be Mr. Zero, who is a longtime fan favorite character, widely regarded to be one of the best villains that One Piece has ever produced, with a devil fruit ability that makes him practically unbeatable. This isn't just a weird, wacky magical fruit power. Nah, this is our first taste of Oh no, there is some pretty serious power in the Grand Line. Now in the announcement, Echiro Oda also gave away who the next Straw Hat is going to be. His name is Tony Tony Chopper, and he is a doctor, reindeer, human. It's complicated, mostly again due to magical fruit, because if there's a weird thing that happens in this world, you can almost always blame the fruit. But Chopper is the big question mark of the season. How they pull Chopper off has the potential to make or break the entire show. It's not an easy ask. And one theory going around is that they're going to make Chopper a human, which breaking news I actually think is now 100% confirmed because, and this is a Grand Line review exclusive, we have obtained an official promotional image from season two, which shows Chopper as a human in his, or I suppose her, post time skip outfit. And along with this, we're also changing the title of the show to One Penis. Look, it's a bold maneuver, but one that I fully support. It's an adaptation after all. Sometimes you just need to make changes, big changes. But we discover Chopper on a location called Drum Island with another character named Dr. Kuriha, who I only bring up because there has been a long-standing campaign to cast Jamie Lee Curtis as Dr. Kuriha. This is because she's actually a massive fan of One Piece, and I believe she even went to the premiere of Film Gold. And also Chopper is her favorite character, so it just works. And as cringy as fan castings can be, I do think that she would be pretty damn good for this role. <laughs> I love Tony Tony Chopper, it's my favorite character in One Piece. Have you watched all of it? Yes. Everything? Actually, yes. So who's that old wizened woman who wears the low cut bell bottoms? She has long gray hair. She was with the doctor up on the hill. Dr. Gurekha. Right. Ruby wants me to play. You um, should, you should do it in who, the second season of Netflix. You Ruby wants me to play that woman. Actually, the whole internet wants you to do it. Maybe you should the do it. The whole internet? Yes, it's a pretty popular fan cast. And speaking of casting, in my previous live action video, I noted that Dean DeMonts was cast as Dragon. However, because we didn't see him in season one, I hypothesized that this indicated that season two had already begun some form of pre-production. And this, this is weirdly complicated because I was both right and wrong. A lot of people pointed out that Dean did appear in season one, but it was as an extra in Kokoyashi. This, this is true. However, there's a however. Dean was also cast as Dragon. On Instagram, he even posted an image of himself in the Dragon costume, and confirmed that they shot a scene with him that didn't make it into the final cut. Disappointing to see my scene wasn't even in, especially when I put so much hard work in it. Now this leaves us with a couple of options. One, he was and still is cast as Dragon, but since they had to stop the series before Logtown, it was decided that focusing on Dragon in the beginning, eh, pulls a bit too much away from the other characters that really need some more time in East Blue. Fair enough. I think that showing the green cloak is plenty for this first season. And here's a slightly spicier interpretation though. Dean was cast as Dragon, but along the way, a decision was made, maybe after seeing his scene, that perhaps he wasn't what they were looking for with a dragon. So as a result, they cut his scene from season one so that it would allow them the freedom to recast without continuity problems. Another massive character to expect is Port Gasty Ace, another big fan favorite who, while he doesn't have a huge role in the Alabaster Saga, is absolutely integral to be introduced here. The thing about One Piece is, and you don't quite realize this just from season one alone, but it operates through very layered storytelling. At any given time, we're following three to four different narratives. Most of that focus is spent on the Straw Hats, what they're doing. That's our primary narrative, and that takes place 
place on a comparatively much smaller scale. But happening around them, there are always big global events in motion. And one of these big global events is centered directly on Ace. And in fact, his story is what leads to the culmination of the entire first half of One Piece. So this isn't just another fun character with crazy powers. This boy right here is gonna be pretty damn pivotal. And if One Piece does make it to that season six mark, then this is a dream role for the actor lucky enough to score Ace. Someone else we're going to get to know very well is one Nefertari Vivi, princess of the Alabaster Kingdom, which is where the saga takes its name. And very notably, she has a colossal pet duck named Karu, who if I had to guess, is probably gonna be cut. Or maybe reduced to a more cameo role. Like we see Vivi with a small pet duck in a flashback and oh, that's Karu, that's nice. Because it's things like Karu that are the big challenge of adapting One Piece. Because for all intents and purposes, no, Karu isn't a major character. He has quite a modest role, but everything in One Piece is effectively another Karu. Every small detail of this world is stranger than the last. Like another one they may cut or reduce to a fun reference in season two are the Kung Fu Dugongs, which are exactly what they sound like. So if we're thinking of streamlining everything more along the lines of you know, a bit more realism, then I think that Karu will be an unfortunate victim of that. But I also wanted to know what all of you think about the season two announcement. I'm still having the idea of there being a live action series. I'm, what? <laughs> so I've been staring at this comment for, for quite a while now and I can't even begin to figure out what it means. Maybe he means hating instead of having. If so, he here's the thing. Even if you absolutely hated season one, this is still a very good thing because overall people seem to have really enjoyed it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna funnel more people down the anime and manga pipeline, which is the thing that you like. So even if you didn't like it, it's gonna result in more people liking the thing you do like. This this is good, this is always good. If they get to Impel down, does it mean a full season without the rest of the crew slash cast? That's kind of why I said a potential season six would be a bit of a downer. Because, like, unless a really big change is made, the rest of the crew wouldn't really be in it. Most of the main cast wouldn't be in the potential final season of the show. I mean, they would, but in like very minor roles. I can't wait to see Chopper and Robin. That's a good point. I haven't even talked about Robin yet, but that will be a very important piece of casting. And this is actually where we have to start asking questions about a potential live action only experience. Because would it even be possible for live action viewers not to be spoiled about Robin. I mean, to be fair, back in the day, the anime spoiled anime only watches by putting Robin in the opening credits long, long, long before she joined. Alabaster wasn't even close to over. So maybe they'll make her more good from the get-go. And actually Robin could be a potential good excuse to maybe, and don't crucify me by suggesting this, but skip Little Garden. If cuts have to be made, that looks like a big target. And in the manga, Robin gives the crew an eternal pose to Nanimonai Island, which, and this is a super obscure reference, but that was the island created by the goldfish excrement of the island eater that Dory and Broggy once landed on. So maybe this could be an alternate universe where the Straw Hats do accept her help, which also ends up helping production. I really hope the hype lasts the three years it's going to take for it to actually release. So that's that's a reality we should flag. This news is very exciting, but we do need to just, just settle down a bit. Executive producer Becky Clements did make a statement that season two could possibly be released within a 12 to 18 month window if they move quickly. Quickly. And the one thing that's not happening right now for anyone is quick movement, because we're still in the midst of a writer's and actor's track. So there is absolutely nothing happening until those are resolved. And even then, I think that 12 to 18 months is, is a little bit hopeful, because Becky says that they've got the scripts ready, but then Echiro Oda's announcement of season two kind of directly contradicted that, because he said that the scripting still needs work. In fact, let me find his exact words. Okay, his exact words are, it'll take a while to get the scripts ready, which I think is for the best, because what Becky says implies that the scripts for season two were completed before season one was even released. And while again, they did an incredible job, I feel like there's a lot of feedback from season one that they should take into account and give season two another pass at the very, very least. Basically take what worked, do more of that, a lot more of that, and cut out what didn't work, do, do much less of that. More of this, less of that, and maybe something new. And that's the sort of thing that you wouldn't necessarily have known before you released it to an audience. But all in all, <laughs> look, I wouldn't expect expect to see season two before say mid to late 2025. And that's, that's at best 2026 wouldn't surprise
surprise me. But also, let's be real here, season two is going to be a very different beast. Because to be blunt, there wasn't a whole lot of pressure on season one. It may feel like there was, but there wasn't. With all due respect to the ungodly effort that Oda and the production crew put into season one, expectations were low. They were so low that they were practically non-existent. A lot of the world had already written this off as mediocre because eh, it was live action anime that's never been done good before by Western production. It's not gonna be good. So all this show had to do to be considered a success was not fall completely flat on its face. And One Piece not only did that, but it obliterated expectations by delivering an actual watchable show that was fun and engaging. However, what this means is that expectations for season two are going to be very different. Now that we know that this can actually work, our expectations aren't down here anymore. They're more around here, which means that there is going to be a lot of pressure to make a big step up from season one because delivering that same quality again might not cut it. But look, who am I to talk? For the last five years, I've been incredibly pessimistic about this project and they managed to shatter that once. So why not again? Why not? I myself have extreme reservations about how a season two would actually function, but the good news is I'm not the one making it. So you let me know in the comments, are you excited for season two of live action One Piece to be released in 2025, maybe 2026?